Hey guys, if you're a regular subscriber to this channel, you know I normally do lore videos about Transformers, but with Avengers Infinity War in cinemas now, I thought it might be fun to do a one-off video about something else that I love. Now, there are no spoilers for the movie here, because this is the basics on the comics history of the Infinity Stones. The story of the Infinity Stones began in 1972's Marvel premiere number one. In this issue, the master geneticist known as the High Evolutionary charged the artificial superhuman Adam Warlock with protecting Counter-Earth, a duplicate of Earth the Evolutionary had created. To empower him for this task, the Evolutionary gifted Warlock an emerald jewel which he wore on his forehead. As Warlock's adventures continued into his own solo series, the gemstone was shown to bestow various powers on the hero, including flight, strength, force blasts, and molecular manipulation. It came to be dubbed a Soul Jewel, so named because it drew on the spirit of love and support of Warlock's friends to fuel itself. Writer-artist Jim Starlin was responsible for a key evolution in the Jewel's story in the pages of Strange Tales in 1975. Starlin renamed it a Soul Gem, the name by which it would most famously become known, and revealed its dark side when, of its own volition, it absorbed the soul of an alien knight who Warlock was battling. Over the course of Starlin's tenure, moving from Strange Tales back into Warlock's revived solo series, Warlock grappled with the gem's new vampiric hunger for souls, and it became an object of interest to the death-worshipping alien warlord Thanos. In 1976's Warlock No. 15, Warlock learned from the gem itself that it was one of the six. This plot thread was picked up on in 1977's Marvel Team-Up No. 55, in which two more of these six soul gems were introduced, one in the possession of the cosmic being known as the Stranger, and the other held by the ancient Gardener. Starlin then concluded his saga later that year in a two-part story in Avengers Annual No. 7 and Marvel 2-in-1 Annual No. 2, which saw Thanos gather all six gems and combine their power into one huge gem capable of snuffing out stars. Thanos' plans were stopped and all but Warlock's gem apparently destroyed, but in the process, Warlock died and his soul was absorbed into his gem. He was buried on Counter-Earth and his gem left atop his grave. A few years later, 1980's Incredible Hulk number 248 revealed that the Gardener had taken Warlock's soul gem from its resting place to replace his own. From there, the Gardener went on to join forces with his fellow Elders of the Universe, a conclave of some of the most ancient beings in creation, in an extended story arc that ran through the first 20 issues of Silver Surfer from 1987 to 1989 in which it transpired that the other five soul gems had not been destroyed, but rather scattered across the cosmos. Between them, the elders recovered all the gems and employed their power in a plan to destroy the planet-eating Galactus. Their efforts were co-opted by Galactus's cosmic opposite, the In-Betweener, and though the scheme met with failure, the elders and the In-Betweener retained possession of the gems, keeping one apiece. Jim Starlin returned with 1990's two-issue Thanos Quest miniseries to tell the story of the gem's previously unknown origins. Via the enigmatic Infinity Well, Thanos discovered that the gems were the remnants of an omnipotent being from the primordial past, who was, at the time of its existence, the only living being in all of creation. Unable to bear the loneliness of its own existence, the being ended its own life, giving birth to reality as we know it but the core of its power was reincarnated in the form of six gems. Now aware of the full extent of the gems' power, Thanos sought to unite them once more. Up to this point, they had all been identified as soul gems, but this was the story that saw Thanos rechristen them the Infinity Gems, as it transpired that only Warlock's former gem, now in the hands of the Inbetweener, had power over the soul. The Red Gem, in possession of the Champion, was the Gem of Power, which bestowed impossible strength on its bearer. The Blue Gem, held by the Grand Master, enhanced the powers of the mind. The Purple Gem, owned by the Runner, granted power over space. The Orange Gem, owned by the Gardener, power over the flow of time. And the Yellow Gem, possessed by the Collector, allowed mastery over the substance of reality itself. Deceiving and defeating each of the gem bearers, Thanos gathered all six gems and united them on his glove, 
creating the Infinity Gauntlet, and by their combined powers was granted the might of a god. This led directly into the seminal 1991 crossover event, the Infinity Gauntlet, in which Thanos used his new power to eradicate half of all life in the universe, before losing the gauntlet to a resurrected Adam Warlock, who set things right. Subsequently, in 1992's Warlock and the Infinity Watch, the Universal Judge, the Living Tribunal, ruled Warlock unfit to bear the gauntlet. In response, Warlock divided the gems among his closest allies, who together formed a team he dubbed the Infinity Watch. The gems would remain in the team's possession for several years, only briefly reunited through the machinations of Warlock's evil twin, the Magus, in the 1992 crossover The Infinity War. That scheme ended in failure when Warlock swapped out a phony reality gem for the real thing, weakening the gauntlet's power enough for him to retake the gems from his dark doppelganger. In 1995, as part of the Black September crossover between Marvel Comics and Malibu Comics, the alien vampire Rune stole the gems from the Infinity Watch. A confrontation between Rune and the Silver Surfer resulted in the gems being scattered across the Malibu universe, the Ultraverse. But they were soon collected by the Asgardian god of mischief, Loki. The crossover then revealed the existence of a previously unheard of, long-lost seventh gem, the Ego Gem which contained a sentient operating system capable of combining the gems back into a single omnipotent being. This gem possessed the Eternal, Circe, and used her to steal the other gems from Loki. The seven gems then merged together, creating a being that named itself Nemesis, who set about using her powers of creation to combine the Malibu and Marvel universes into a new reality. She was stopped by the Avengers and the Malibu heroes of Ultraforce when the Avenger Black Knight used his ebony blade to sever the bonds between the gems, scattering them across the Ultraverse once more. The Ego Gem's essence was absorbed by the other gems, and they began evolving into distinct beings. But the cancellation of all the Ultraverse titles over the next year meant that this plot thread was completely abandoned, and the Ego Gem was never mentioned again. And by 1998, Adam Warlock was shown to have recovered the Soul Gem back in the Marvel Universe in its normal form, under unrevealed circumstances. The other gems were not seen again for years until they were recovered from across the dimensions by Galactus in 2003's Thanos series. An interdimensional parasite had tricked Galactus into the belief that he could use the six gems to cure himself of his eternal hunger, when in reality, they would allow the parasite into the Marvel Universe to destroy it. It fell to Thanos to thwart this entity's plan, resulting in the gems once again being dispersed across the stars. By the time of 2004's She-Hulk series, the Power Gem had fallen back into the hands of its old bearer, the Champion. When She-Hulk defeated him in battle, the Champion sought revenge for the humiliation and gifted the Power Gem to She-Hulk's arch-enemy, Titania. But She-Hulk managed to wrest the gem away from her and entrusted it to the Fantastic Four's Mr. Fantastic for safekeeping. This led into 2007's New Avengers Illuminati, in which Mr. Fantastic and the secret superhero cabal of which he was part, the Illuminati, covertly set about gathering up the rest of the gems and the gauntlet, rationalizing that no group of heroes was better suited to protect them than they were. In 2010's Avengers series, the underworld supervillain The Hood managed to steal several of the gems from the Illuminati, but the combined forces of the Avengers were able to stop him, and the gems were secretly returned to their hiding places. They remained in the Illuminati's possession until 2013's New Avengers, in which the group entrusted Captain America with the Infinity Gauntlet so he could use it to stop another universe from colliding with the Marvel Universe. He succeeded, but the exertion shattered the Infinity Gems, apparently destroying them for good. It was in that same year that Thor The Dark World introduced the gems into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, rechristening them the Infinity Stones and changing their colours around. Unsurprisingly, the movie take on the gems would eventually influence how they appeared in comics. See, without the gems to aid them, the Illuminati were unable to prevent further dimensional collisions, resulting in the collapse and destruction of the entire multiverse in 2015's Secret Wars. However, using the reality-shaping powers of the Molecule Man, Mr. Fantastic was able to recreate the multiverse, and 2017's Marvel Legacy No. 1 revealed that the Reborn Universe included reconstituted Infinity Gems. Only now, they were known as the Infinity Stones, and their shapes and colours were changed to match the movies. 
Over the next six months, the stones were located all over the Marvel Universe in various series. And that brings us up to date, as the stones are currently being fought over in the Infinity Countdown miniseries on shelves now, leading into this summer's Infinity Wars event. And those are the basics on the Infinity Stones. We'll be back to Robots in Disguise next time, but I hope you enjoyed this little digression. Let me know in the comments, and maybe I'll do more varied basics episodes about other comics, toys, and cartoons in the future.